When the lungs are failing in COVID-19, there is a lack of healthy lung tissue to adequately cover the body's need for oxygen, which may lead to severe hypoxia. However, our patients often have a hidden reserve capacity that we can use. We will teach you how, when, and why proning intubated patients can make a big difference and help you save lives. Our treatment in respiratory failure due to COVID-19 is based on our experience in treating ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. ARDS is a term used to describe a certain type of respiratory failure regardless of the underlying disease. The ARDS diagnosis consists of four criteria where perhaps the most important one is the oxygen level in the blood relative to the fraction of inspired oxygen, called the PF ratio. This stems from the equation where PaO2 is divided by FiO2. The other criteria are described in another video. A healthy human inspires oxygen from the outside air and through pulmonary gas exchange an arterial partial pressure of 13 kPa is achieved. The PF ratio is a way to describe the adequacy of gas exchange and is the ratio between the amount of oxygen in the blood measured as PaO2 and which fraction of inspired oxygen, FiO2, that is needed to achieve that particular PaO2. FiO2 in normal air is 0.21 and PaO2 is, as previously mentioned, around 13. The normal PF ratio is found by dividing the PaO2 13 by the FiO2 0.21. This gives us a PF ratio of 61.9. A CT scan in a healthy person might return this picture, with two healthy lungs full of gray gas-carrying parenchyma close to the pulmonary vessels branching outwards, here seen in white. When a patient suffers from ARDS, the situation changes. The lungs can't cope with upholding a normal rate of gas exchange, which is most often seen clinically as a hypoxemia. The body tries to compensate by increasing the work of breathing, which can be harmful and send the patient into a downward spiral. In this scenario, the arterial blood gas might return a value of 12 kPa, despite increasing the FiO2 to 0.6. That means that the oxygen is 60% of the inhaled air. The PF ratio is then calculated by dividing 12 by 0.6, which is 20. This ratio is used to assess the severity of ARDS, where less than 13 is severe ARDS, 13 to 27 moderate, and 27 to 40 is mild ARDS. Almost all patients with COVID-19 who require mechanical ventilation will fulfill the oxygenation criterion for ARDS since hypoxemia is the most typical symptom. Most, but not all, will fulfill the other criteria too. We have a lot of experience in treating ARDS. The cornerstone in moderate to severe ARDS is mechanical ventilation according to the principles of lung protective ventilation, which we will talk about in another film. If that is not enough and the patient keeps deteriorating, prone positioning can be helpful. This is something that is likely to be needed in COVID-19 patients. According to preliminary reports from Italy, the UK, and the US, up to one in four patients with mechanical ventilation may need placing in a prone position. So why is prone positioning or proning useful? In ARDS, treating the underlying condition is essential to resolving the pulmonary problem. In COVID-19, there is no specific treatment for the underlying condition. The key principle is to support the lungs while minimizing the damage inflicted from mechanical ventilation. Here, we can see a representative CT image of a patient suffering from ARDS. The white parts at the bottom of the lungs, which are almost making up half the lung volumes, contain no air and can therefore not take part in gas exchange. They are still perfused, however, but no oxygen will be transported into the blood vessel adjacent to the consolidated part of the lungs. This is one of the reasons why the patients become hypoxic. In the supine position, gravity makes perfusion better in the dorsal part of the lungs, whereas ventilation usually occurs in the ventral parts of the lungs. Perfusion going to one part of the lung and ventilation to another is what we call a ventilation-perfusion mismatch, or VQ mismatch for short. However, we can use this to our advantage to improve the patient's condition. By turning the patient into a prone position, we can make the lungs open up. Here's the same patient, now in a prone position. The heart will exert less pressure on the lungs and the perfusion, which goes towards the dorsal part of the lungs, will better match the open and ventilated parts of the lungs. We have therefore decreased the shunt, the amount of perfused non-ventilated lung, and improved the VQ ratio. 
the diaphragm will also exert less pressure on the lungs in a prone position. Normally, both oxygenation and ventilation will improve as a result of better VQ ratio and recruitment of posteriorly located atelectasis. It's not unusual to see an immediate effect with a patient instantaneously improving upon proning. Proning the patient in moderate to severe ARDS is very effective. Well-made studies have shown a decrease in 28 mortality from 32% to 16% in patients who have been placed in a prone position four times on average. This is an unusually good result for any treatment in the ICU. Uh, for those interested in learning more, we can recommend Guerin's original article published in 2013. In short, we, can, we have good data supporting how to treat and how to improve survival in moderate to severe ARDS. So how do we apply this experience to the COVID-19 pandemic, which to date has only been ongoing for a few months? Treatment guidelines are constantly being updated as we learn more, and there are understandably no randomized control trials. However, experiences from Italy, the UK, and the US indicated that proning patient, patients is an important part of the treatment. There are even promising reports of prone positioning being used in awake, non-intubated patients whose oxygen support consists of a high-flow nasal cannula. In order to achieve good results from proning our patients, we have to choose the right patients at the right time. Patients who are considered for prone positioning have a severe pulmonary dysfunction. Prone positioning should be considered in those with a PF ratio of 15 to 20 or lower. Before proning the patients, all other treatment options in the supine position should be exhausted. For example, by increasing PEEP to the highest safe level. If that is insufficient and the required FiO2 remains high, prone positioning should be considered. It requires a lot of manpower, so it has to be worth it. Usually, it's advised not to wait too long to turn the patient over as better results have been seen with early proning, but this is where COVID-19 patients may differ from other ARDS patients. Patients often need to spend a long time in the prone position. 16 hours per day is advised and our preferred time is from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. in order to avoid repositioning the patient in the middle of the night. The most common complications are pressure sores, most often located on the patient's face, chest, or hips. It is important to turn the head and adjust arms and legs every two hours and even more often if needed. The treatment usually needs to be repeated multiple days in a row to be as effective as possible. Turning a sedated and intubated patient in a safe manner requires a lot of personnel. Usually five people are needed, and even more if it's a heavy patient. Oh. In summary, optimal effect of proning is achieved if the treatment is done during a minimum of 16 hours early on in the disease and repeatedly over several consecutive nights. Note that there are contraindications for proning the patient. Absolute contraindication includes spinal instability, malignant arrhythmias that may require CPR, severe hemodynamic instability, elevated ICP, or recent sternotomy. Relative contraindications include, but are not limited to, pressure source, abdominal surgery, difficult airway, and pregnancy. Make sure you go through a checklist before turning the patient. Make sure you have a plan in case of accidental extubation or other complications that may arise, and have your equipment ready in case you should need it. Also, be sure to watch an instructional video before doing this for the first time. There is now a growing body of experience that indicates that prone positioning is an important part of the treatment in the most heavily afflicted patients with COVID-19. That means that you might need to initiate this treatment, which is physically demanding for you and your colleagues. However, they may make a huge difference for our patients and thus save lives.